Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be explaining direct gene transfer methods. If you are new to this channel, please press the subscribe button and click on the bell icon to get notified. Today we are going to discuss about the direct gene transfer methods. Genetic engineering that has revolutionized the crop improvement pathway by identifying and transferring novel genes to the existing alive cultivars. Various methods have been developed for transferring the genes into the plants and continuous efforts have been made to increase its efficiency. Both direct and indirect gene transfer approaches contain their own merits and demerits. So in today's video, we will be discussing only about the direct gene transfer methods. The classical Plant breeding technique is a slow process and it takes 10 to 15 years to release the new variety. And this method is restricted to the plants that can hybridize sexually. The recombinant DNA technology is a very powerful tool that molecular biologists can use to study distinct biological characteristics. The plant genetic engineering not only improves the cycle of plant breeding but also helps to introduce new genes either by removing the obstacles of uh, sexual incompatibility by somatic hybridization or by introducing necessary genes into the plant cells utilizing different methods of transformation. So there is a revolutionary uh, improvement uh, with the use of recombinant DNA technology for the uh, crop by transferring genes directly into the plant cells. So let's see what are the importance of the gene transfer technologies. Gene transfer technology will help provide a resistance against viruses and it helps acquiring the insect insecticidal resistance, helps the uh, help to strengthen the plant to grow against uh, bacterial diseases, develop uh, the plants to grow in drought. So environmental factors like uh, drought, extreme salt tolerance, uh, etc can be achieved through genetic engineering and uh, the engineering plans for nutritional quality so improve the uh, nutritional uh, quality varieties can be produced using this uh, method herbicide resistance uh, resistance against uh, fungal pathogens and uh, to basically to any abiotic stress tolerance and also helps in delaying the uh, ripening process so this is extremely useful in uh, transport and storage whether we can uh, where we can uh, delay the ripening process so these are the important uh, features which we can achieve through genetic uh, engineering technologies so one is the uh, improvement of uh, uh, resistance against viruses insecticidal resistance and uh, other nutritional quality improvements so let's see the different types of uh, gene transfer so genetic uh, transfer techniques can be categorized into two different groups that is vector mediated gene transfer or the indirect method and the vectorless gene transfer so that is a direct method so today we are uh, discussing about vectorless gene transfer so vectorless gene transfer the term direct gene transfer is used uh, when foreign dna is directly inserted into the plant genome and majority of the methods for direct uh, transfer of dna are simple and very effective mm -hmm. does not require any vector for transporting uh, the genetic material into the plant cell so this involves direct gene transfer or the transfer of DNA directly into the plant cell. So the uh, direct gene transfer can be broadly divided into two categories that is uh, based on the physical method and chemical method. In physical method we have uh, ultraparation, uh, particle bombardment, microinjection, microinjection, liposome mediated transformation and silicon carbide fiber mediated transformation. And in chemical methods, we have uh, PEG mediated or DEA uh, dextran mediated, calcium phosphate precipitation, etc. And uh, other methods include uh, DNA incubation, pollen transformation, and laser induced transformation. So let's uh, look into each one of these in detail. Let's see uh, electroporation. Electroporation is a direct gene transfer technique for incorporating the DNA into the cells by exposing them to high voltage electric pulses for a short period of time. So what happens is that when you apply an uh, electric field uh, along with the cell and the DNA in solution, it creates small pores in the cell surface and that will cause DNA to be taken up through that pores. Since the plant cell wall is uh, very thick uh, and it will restrict the movement of macromolecules, plant protocols are used for electroporation. The plant material is incubated in a buffer containing solution uh, along with the desired foreign uh, DNA and it, that is subjected to high voltage electric impulses. The 
the electric current uh, which will lead to the formation of small temporary holes in the membrane of the protoplast uh, through which the dna can enter surface uh, of the cell is uh, cell wall is very thick so that's the reason we are using protoplast so uh, once the uh, dna enters into the cell the foreign dna gets incorporated into the host genome resulting in the genetic transformation and uh, the protoplast can then be cultured to regenerate into whole plants intact cells uh, callus cultures and uh, immature embryos can also be used uh, with uh, suitable pre and uh, post treatments for the uptake of dna and let's see the advantages of electroporation the uh, electroporation method is very rapid convenient and cost effective technique and the transformed cells are the same physiological state after electroporation and the efficiency of electroporation can be improved by optimizing the electric field strength and the addition of permanent so these are the advantages of electroporation whereas it has some uh, limitations also uh, the under the normal conditions the amount of dna delivered into the plant cell is very low and the efficiency of electroporation is highly variable depending on the plant material and the treatment conditions and the regeneration of plants is not very easy particularly when uh, protoplasts are used so these are certain uh, limitations where is uh, wherein we can see that uh, there is a variation in the process is highly variable and uh, regeneration after the electroporation is also very difficult process let's see the next technique particle bombardment so this is also known as uh, micro projectile uh, or ballistic or gene gun method uh, so the particle bombardment is most effective method for gene transfer for the creation of uh, transgenic plants this method is versatile due to the fact that uh, it can be successfully used for uh, dna transfer in uh, mammalian cells and uh, microorganisms the micro projectile bombardment method was initially named as uh, ballistics by inventor sandford and uh, ballistics is a combination of biological and uh, ballistics so that's the reason uh, it is called as uh, uh, ballistic technique the the process of transformation employs uh, foreign dna coated with uh, minute gold or tungsten particles uh, to deliver into the plant cells the coated particles are loaded into the particle gun and then accelerated to high speed using pressurized helium gas or by electrostatic energy released by a droplet of water exposed to high voltage in order to protect the plant tissue from being damaged by the bombardment the cultures are maintained on a high osmotic media or subjected to limited uh, plasmolysis the integration of uh, the foreign dna is believed to be through two stage process and the net result uh, is that the particle bombardment is frequently associated with a high copy number at a single locus and this type of single locus may be beneficial for uh, regeneration of plants uh, let's see what are the factors that can affect the uh, particle bombardment this depends on the nature of micro particles uh, nature of tissue or cells that we are going to transform and the amount of dna used during this uh, process and also on the environmental conditions or the parameters the advantages of particle bombardment is that the gene transfer can efficiently done in organized tissues and the different uh, species of plants can be used to develop the uh, transgenic plants but uh, this also has some limitations uh, the major complication is the production of high transgene copy number this result in instability of uh, transgene expression due to gene silencing and the target tissue may often get uh, damaged due to the lack of uh, control of bombardment velocity and sometimes uh, undesirable chimeric plants may be regenerated so these are some of the limitations of the particle bombardment uh, let's see the micro injection technique micro injection is a direct physical method which involves the mechanical insertion of uh, disabled dna into the target cell the target cell may be one identified from intact cells protoplast callus embryos or uh, mere stems and the micro injection is used for the transfer of cellular organelles and uh, and for the manipulation of chromosomes the dna solution is injected directly inside the cell using capillary glass micropipettes with the help of uh, micro manipulators of micro injection assembly so the major limitation of the micro injection is that it's a slow process and it's expensive and it has to be performed by trained and skilled personnel the limitation is that the major limitation is that proce uh, the process is technically demanding and time consuming only 40 to 50 protoplasts can be micro injected in one hour so the, these are some of the limitations of this technique coming to the uh, macro injection uh, the injection of plasmid dna into the um, lumen of uh, developing inflorescence using hypodermic syringe is known as the micro macro injection 
Uh, for this, uh, aqueous solution of DNA uh, was introduced into a developing floral tillers uh, 14 days prior to the meiosis. And the transformed seeds were obtained from these injected tillers uh, after cross pollination with other and uh, injected tillers. The mechanism by which uh, this DNA entered the psycho tissue is uh, not clearly known. And uh, this technique does not require plotoplast and uh, instruments. And it is simple and cheap. Uh, this method may prove uh, useful for gene transfer into cereals which do not regenerate from cultured cell easily but uh, the limitations are that it is uh, less specific less efficient and the frequency of transformation is also very low let's see uh, liposome mediated transformation so liposomes are artificially created uh, lipid vesicles containing phospholipid membrane they are successfully used in mammalian cells for the delivery of proteins, drugs and uh, the liposomes carrying genes can be employed to fuse with protoplast and uh, transfer genes. The efficiency of the transformation increases when the process is carried out in conjunction with the uh, polyethylene glycol. The liposome mediated transformation involves adhesion of a liposome to the protoplast surface. Its fusion at the site of attachment and release the plasmid into the, or the foreign DNA into the Cell. So, liposome, in liposome mediated uh, transformation, the liposomes get attached to the cell surface and that is imbibed, taken in, and then the foreign DNA is released into the cell. Uh, the advantages uh, is that uh, being present in the encapsulated form of uh, liposome, DNA is protected from environmental damage. So, it will be uh, quite stable in that, and the DNA is stable and can be stored for some time in liposome prior to transfer. And it can be applicable to wide range of uh, plant cells, and uh, it can good reproducibility can be achieved. The major problem with liposome mediated transformation is uh, difficulty associated with regeneration of plants from transformed past, and the method has not been commonly used because of the difficulty in constructing the lipid vesicles. Uh, coming to the next technique, it is called as the silicon carbide fiber mediated transformation. The DNA is delivered into the cell cytoplasm and nucleus by silicon carbide fibers of uh, 0.3 to 0.6 micrometer diameter and uh, 10 to 80 micrometer in length. The fiber mediated uh, delivery of DNA into the cytoplasm is similar to microinjection. Uh, whereas the fibers are capable of penetrating the cell wall and plasma membrane and can deliver the DNA directly into the cells. The DNA coated silicon fiber carbide fibers uh, are vortexed with the plant material. And during mixing, the DNA adhering to the fibers enters cells and gets stably integrated into the host genome. The DNA along with the silicon carbide fibers are mixed with the plant material. During the mixing, it enters the uh, cell and gets integrated into the genome. The advantages include uh, direct delivery of uh, DNA into the intact wall cells and this avoids the protoplast isolation. And this procedure is simple, rapid and uh, does not involve any cost. Uh, there are some disadvantages for this. Uh, the silicon carbide fibers are carcinogenic and uh, therefore it has to be handled very carefully. The embryonic plant cells are uh, hard and compact and uh, are resistant to silicon carbide fiber penetration. So these are some of the, uh, the shortcomings of this uh, method. So we have seen all the physical uh, gene transfer methods. Let's see chemical gene transfer methods. So this involves uh, polyethylene glycol mediated transfer, DAE dextran mediated method, calcium phosphate coprecipitation mediated method, DNA inhibition and uh, pollen transformation and laser induced transformation. So first let's see the polyethylene glycol mediated transfer. The PEG or the polyethylene glycol in presence of uh, uh, divalent cations like uh, calcium destabilizes the membrane of uh, protoplast and it renders it permeable to the naked DNA. So this way DNA can enter into the nucleus of the protoplast and gets integrated with the host genome. This procedure involves the isolation of protoplast and their suspension and addition of uh, DNA followed by slow addition of uh, polyethylene glycol and this uh, mixture is incubated and uh, this will generate the transformation of protoplast. The advantage of this method is that a large number of protoplasts can be simultaneously transformed and this technique can be successfully used for a wide range of plant species. Uh, the limitations involves um, the DNA is susceptible for degradation and uh, rearrangement and the random integration of uh, foreign DNA into the genome may result in undesirable traits and uh, regeneration of plants from transformed protoplast is a difficult task. So these are the shortcomings of uh, egg mediated transformation. And next let's see a DNA uh, dextran mediated transformation. So the disruptable DNA can be complexed with high molecular weight polymer, uh, polymer uh, that is the diethyl aminoethyl DAE dextran and which can be transferred. The efficiency uh, 
can be increased to 80% when uh, we give a shock with the DMSO. The major limitation of this approach is that it does not yield a stable transformants. Coming to calcium phosphate co-precipitation method, the DNA is allowed to mix with the calcium chloride solution and the isotonic uh, phosphate buffer to form a DNA calcium phosphate precipitate. When the actively dividing cells in culture are exposed to this precipitate for several hours, the cells will get transformed. And the success of transformation is dependent on high concentration of DNA and the protection of complex precipitate. Next, let, uh, next, let's see the DNA inhibition by cells, tissues, embryos and seeds. When um, a dry isolated embryos of uh, wheat, barley are imbibed in DNA solution, they take up the DNA and show expression of the marker gene. Uh, the dry seeds whose seed coats have been removed also take up DNA when imbibed into the DNA solution. So the imbibed seeds or embryos are germinated uh, on appropriate selective media to isolate the transformed embryo. Next, let's see pollen transformation. Now, this involves the gene transfer by soaking the pollen grains in a DNA solution prior to their use for pollination. The method is highly attractive in the view of its simplicity and general applicability uh, but so far there is no definite evidence uh, for the transgene being transferred by pollen soaked DNA so, so this is still and uh, there is no uh, true evidence for this uh, method. Uh, next is the laser induced transformation and uh, it is a method of introducing uh, DNA into the plant cell with uh, laser microbeam. Uh, small pores in the membrane are created by laser microbeam and uh, the DNA from the surrounding solution can then enter into the uh, cell cytoplasm through the small pores. The laser induced stress waves facilitate a targeted gene transfer and uh, pressure waves uh, caused by uh, nanosecond laser pulses can be used to deliver macromolecules into the cells and uh, tissues. So these are the uh, techniques basically used for the gene transfer methods, direct gene transfer methods. Hope you are clear with this topic. Uh, if you like the video, uh, please share it with your friends. Thank you.